What is going on guys? My name is Matt Berger and today we're gonna to be flipping this 2005 Honda CR125. I'm gonna be bringing you guys along, telling you how much I paid for it, how much I have in parts, how much time I have into it, and at the end of the video, we'll see our overall profit. This bike was posted for less than one minute when I contacted the guy. I knew it would sell quick, so I offered him his full asking price of $2,100. I know $2,100 sounds like a lot when we're gonna be flipping this, but there's not a whole lot we have to do with this bike. A lot of the big ticket items are already there. As you can see, we already got the black wheels. It's got the FMF exhaust. It's got some aftermarket parts and it's got electron car, which is gonna be a huge selling point. So what we're gonna do with this bike is exactly what I do with all the bikes I flip. I go through the entire thing. I make sure everything works correctly. I clean it up. I replace anything that's broken. That way, when it's time to sell the bike, I have a really good bike that somebody's gonna be happy with that I would be comfortable and confident buying myself. All right, let's take a closer look at the bike. So as you guys can see, there's some stuff that definitely needs replaced. The front wheel bearings are bad. This front brake line is just way too short. I don't know what's going on here, so that'll need replaced. This Kickstarter is just kind of janky. It's gonna need new grips. The clutch cable's pretty tight. He gave me a new one with it, so we're gonna go ahead and replace that. I can actually hear the springs rattling around in the forks, so we'll definitely have to take those apart, inspect everything filled up with the correct amount of fluid, replace the seals. And of course, we're gonna be going with a Polysport restyle plastic kit on this bike with the OEM style shroud graphics. Like I said, we got the Electron carburetor on here, which is a huge selling point. He also gave me the OEM carburetor that's in great shape, which is a huge plus as well. He also gave me an extra front wheel with the bike, so I'm just gonna keep that in the shop. That way down the road, if I ever need it, I have it. You've seen the bike, you know the plan, here we go. <laughs> back in the shop. I think it cleaned up really well. Now we just got to fix all these little things. So first things first, let's pull these forks off and then we'll go from there. Personally, I'm not too big of a fan of the polished aluminum look, so I'm gonna grab a scotch Brite pad, uh, rough it up a little bit, and give it that brushed look. All right, we got the Electron Carb. I was planning on keeping it because it's a great selling point, but we're actually gonna be taking it off of this bike and putting it on that bike. This is a 2003 CR125 that I just bought, you know, exactly the way you see it. Obviously, somebody kind of got halfway restoring it and then stopped. The whole bike is gonna be brand new top to bottom, so I figured the Electron Carb would be more fitting. And then over here, I have the original 2005 carburetor for this bike. So we're gonna go ahead we're gonna clean this thing up a little bit and then swap these out. I get a lot of people that ask me where I get my pink carburetor hose from and the answer is any OEM parts website. So for example, I got these from Rocky Mountain ATV. Uh, there's a part number I just typed in like 1986 CR125, went to the carburetor diagram and you can get a roll of this for like 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, you get the smaller diameter stuff, so that is where to get these from. It's any kind of OEM parts website.
All right, so the bottom end is in great shape. There's no up and down play. Everything looks great. It spins freely. Piston's actually in pretty good shape. Cylinder and head are in great shape. If you look in the inside, you can see all that cross hatching still in there. No nicks, no marks or anything. Uh, let's throw this in the parts washer and get that cleaned up. So what I've always used in here is this Simple Green HD cleaner. Uh, I love this stuff. It does an awesome job. Now this is a water-based cleaner, not a solvent base. The water base is not as aggressive and doesn't do as good a job cleaning it, but you don't have to worry about any of that flammables or the harsh chemicals and smells. So if you're inside of a house or something like that, um, I, di I didn't want to worry about the solvent stuff. So I just went ahead, went water-based. Once you, you know, pair it up with that heater, once you get this stuff hot, it does an awesome job. Now, unfortunately, I can't find this stuff anywhere and it's super expensive if I did. So I needed some more, so I picked up this ZEP, Z-E-P, purple, clean. It's like the same thing. So I've only used it a couple times. I can't really give an opinion on if it does as good as a job as the Simple Green, but we've got it in here now. We'll get it heated up and uh, we'll throw some of these parts in here and see how it does. All right, so next up is my ultrasonic cleaner, Harbor Freight Special again. I love this thing. Uh, it's super easy to just throw all like nuts and bolts and any kind of like, you know, these springs or anything. You just huck this stuff in here. All right, so when I'm ready to torque stuff on the bike, I like to go ahead and find the service manual. Uh, this case, I just went into Google and typed in 2005 CR125 manual, it popped right up. Cylinder head nut is 20 foot pounds and the cylinder, cylinder mounting nut is 20 foot pounds. This next part is a little confusing, so I'll go ahead and try to run through it. We're gonna be using this torque tool to get the actual nut studs on there. So if you take your normal torque wrench, you set it to 20 foot pounds, coming right out of here where the 3 8 adapter is, is going to be 20 foot pounds but the second you take this and you essentially add this distance here now 20 foot pounds is not 20 foot pounds anymore you're adding length and if you guys know anything about that uh, you're essentially creating a moment you're creating more length here it's like grabbing a really long pipe and putting it on the end to get more leverage you're going to have more leverage you're going to have more torque because you're adding this on so what you have to do is you have to calculate the difference so I know I need to be less than 20 foot pounds, but what do I need to be? That's when we look at this little cheat sheet here. So this is just a sheet that I got off Motion Pro's website for this tool. So it's got this formula down here, you're supposed to use it. So for the example here, it's perfect for my case because this is 20 foot pounds and it comes out to 16 foot pounds. is looking awesome we pretty much got everything wrapped up except for that front end 
While we wait for that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and get out the plastic kit. We'll start putting some of these new plastics on, start from the back. I'm going with a Polysport restyle kit. These are my favorite. They're fairly inexpensive. You're talking 100, 150 bucks and they give you the best return on your investment. It's always nice having a fresh set of plastics when you're selling a bike and these Polysport restyle kits really give it that updated look. We got the forks done. We got them filled up the correct amount of oil. All the clickers are set back to stock. We got those new seals. These things are ready to rock and roll. Now, I personally hate suspension. I don't know why, but every time I work on it, I just make an absolute mess. There's like oil everywhere. The rear shocks are the worst. They usually blow up my face for whatever reason. But I don't know. I just, it's easy, but I, I don't like doing it. I always make a mess. So we got these done finally. And uh, now we just got to get them on the bike. Before we mount up this wheel, we gotta throw these wheel bearings in there real quick. All right, it's time for graphics. I go with an OEM style, just shroud graphic. Keep it simple, looks a lot better than this blank. Now everybody's always asking me where I get my graphics from. It's a company called CoreMoto, C-O-R Moto. I'm gonna go ahead and link their website and their email in the description below and just tell them Matt Burger sent you and they will hook you guys up. on that beat going crazy. Man, this thing turned out awesome. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It's gonna make an awesome bike for somebody. We went through the whole thing top to bottom. All right, we went ahead and got some really good photos. We're gonna get this thing listed online. I cannot stress to you guys enough how important good photos are. We're gonna go ahead and list this bike for $3,600. I know that sounds like a lot for a you know 16 year old two stroke 125, but the market right now is insane. These CRs are bringing a lot of money. They hold their value really, really well. And I really think at 3,600, you know, we got a couple other bikes out there I'm seeing right now around three grand, maybe 2,800, 3,400. But with the way this bike looks, all the work I've done to it, you know, you know, someone could be confident in buying this. I think that's worth, you know, the justification of my $3,600. So we're going to go ahead and get this listed up. 
And I think this thing is gonna go pretty quick. As soon as I get this thing listed, I know my phone's about to be blowing up. So I'm gonna get this listed. I'll check in with you guys in a second and uh, we'll see how we did. There you have it, the bike is gone and it went quick. I listed this thing and in three days it was gone. I was actually busy two of the days, so the first day I could actually meet somebody. I had a ton of people lined up and a gentleman named Dom actually came. He loved the bike, uh, paid in cash, took it home that night. So congratulations Dom on the new bike. So the part I know you guys are waiting for, how much money did we make on it? Let's sit down, let's talk about all the parts I bought for it, how much time I had into it and our overall profit. So if you go back to the beginning of the video, I paid $2,100 for this bike, and I thought it was gonna be a really quick and easy flip. A lot of those big ticket items were there, blah, blah, blah. Well, I was kind of wrong. <laughs> it ended up being a lot more work, and I actually spent it a lot more money than I wanted to on this bike. Now, for a second there, I thought it was gonna be not necessarily a bad buy, but not one of my best, just because the amount of time and money I had into it, I really didn't think at the time, this was kind of back in winter, that the market and where it was, I wasn't gonna be able to get enough. But as soon as you know the weather started getting a little bit nicer outside, and you know the stimulus checks are dropping, people's tax returns are coming, the used bike market has exploded again. I mean, there is nothing out there right now. The prices are super high, so for me, it actually kind of worked out that I took a little longer on this one because I was able to list it at a you know a little bit higher of a price right in the you know crazy market right now. All right, let's jump into the numbers. All right, there's the timesheet. Like I said, just notepad in my phone, super simple. We got a total of 28 hours here. A lot longer than I was expecting. I was thinking maybe 10 to 15, but like I said, more we got into it, there's more stuff we had to clean and replace. Um, and I just wanted to make sure we were, you know, doing everything right. All right, so what did we spend on this bike? Here's my purchase date up here is December 7th. So we've had it since then. We spent 2,100 on the bike. And then down here is my list of all the parts I bought for it. Itemized all out. I got some tax and shipping down here. You know, get top end, the plastics. So 2,100 plus all these parts gives us a total of 2,565 dollars. And we ended up selling the bike for 30. $500. I listed it for 36, got 35 out of it, so I was pretty happy. And that gave us an overall profit of $934 on this one. So my goal when I flip these bikes is around $1,000. That's what I'm shooting for. Anything less than that, you know, 800, 900, I still think that's pretty good. Um, but if you're doing two, three, four hundred dollars on one of these flips where you've got, you know, 20 hours into it, I just don't think that's worth it personally for me. Um, so that's why I try to shoot for $1,000. Anything over $1,000, I'm just like, that is awesome. I, if I get over $1,000 on a flip, I'm ecstatic. Something went really, really right, and you know, I'm having a good time. So that's just bonus at that point. But I like to shoot for $1,000. I think that's a sweet spot when you're doing these flips. I just want to thank you guys so much for waiting to the end of the video, watching all the way through. I've been trying to reply to every single one of your guys' comments. So seriously, thank you guys so much for every view, every like, every comment, every subscriber. This is way more than I ever expected. I just, you know, I'm just an ordinary guy, just like you guys. I just grabbed my camera and, you know, just started working on bikes and stuff. So uh, this has been awesome. Thank you guys so much. And I've got a lot of content coming. I got a lot of bikes back here. I'm not stopping. I got a lot of big plans for 2021 and beyond. And uh, you guys are going to be part of it. So I really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.